Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today we're going to talk about five pieces of Doctor Who expanded media that I think every Doctor Who fan should see, read, listen to, etc. So five pieces of Doctor Who that are not in the show proper, with probably a couple of honorable mentions at the end too, <clears throat> that I feel like every Doctor Who fan should experience because they're great pieces of Doctor Who. First off is... Big Finish, The Chimes of Midnight. This, of course, is an Eighth Doctor story. Uh, very well talked about. I think uh, it, has, it has a very good reputation in the fandom. It is a really good story. I was happy I finally got to listen to it. I actually want a physical copy of that at some point. I'm going to have to get that. It is such a good story. I can see why it's one of the must-listens for the Eighth Doctor in the Big Finish audios. Uh, and why it comes so highly recommended. I very much enjoyed it. The, the past, the, the the plot, the twist and turns. It, it's just a really good story. And um, it, it, it lives up to its reputation. And I definitely feel like every Doctor Who fan should listen to it. Uh, next on the list, sticking with Big Finish for a moment, is the Klein trilogy. I enjoyed it. I like the character of Klein. She's just a fascinating character. Kind of an anomaly a character from a timeline that should never have existed and that only existed because of a mistake made by the Doctor in Ace. And, of course, the Doctor has to deal with her. Uh, with the Klein trilogy, I'm also uh, going to wrap Colts into that, her first story, which technically isn't part of the story, part of the Klein trilogy, but her first story, Colts, is actually really good. And you should definitely, is uh, her introduction... And definitely a great read where the Doctor basically ends up in World War II in a prisoner of war camp. Very good story. An excellent uh, kind of origin story for Klein leading into the Klein trilogy. The first two parts of the Klein trilogy are okay. They're not blowing me away, but they're okay. The first one is a little predictable um, with basically people ending up getting killed one at a time, Agatha Christie style. Uh, I knew, I kind of figured out what was going on easily. And it, it, I knew one character was going to die because they're like, I'm just going to go over here by myself and check this out. And I'm sitting there going, bye-bye, person. Bye-bye, person. It uh, did not end well for them, predictably. The second one, the second story um, is also okay, but it has a really good idea. It has some nice concepts and ideas in it that I really liked. I, the actual idea on paper, the broad strokes of it are quite fascinating with the Doctor basically interacting with basically a giant colony of insects. And it's quite fascinating fascinating how they communicate by smells with the TARDIS translates. It's really some fascinating ideas in there. The story overall is just a little above average. But the third story, The Architects of History, is really good. Quite possibly the best performance I have ever heard, seen Sylvester McCoy do as the Doctor. He just nails the seventh Doctor there. And of course, the... Uh, Actress who does Klein is doing a really good job in it as well. The companion we have in that story was not a traditional companion. Long story is really good in that as well. And then we also have a cool character named Sam, uh, who's quite a fascinating character as well and uh, takes some twists and turns you don't really um, see coming. Uh, matter of fact, the voice actor who voiced Sam, Ian is his name, actually commented on my review for that story, saying he appreciated the review. That made my day, getting that comment. Um, but it's a really, really good story. I really like The Architect of History. The Klein Trilogy and Colts, again, I'm just going to roll them into one, uh, are a very good listen, especially Colts and the final part of the Klein Trilogy. Just phenomenal stories, those two. Next on the list, we're going to jump over to short story territory, and I'm going to talk about Terror of the Umpity Ums. I have mentioned Terror of the Umpity Ums on the channel before. It's been a little while. Uh, this is a short story about the 13th Doctor uh, that came out during lockdown. And um, it's written by Stephen Moffat. And it's fantastic. It's easily my favorite 13th Doctor story. The only thing that comes close might be Power of the Doctor because I do like Power of the Doctor a lot. But Terror of the Umpity Ums really nails the 13th Doctor being the Doctor. If you ever feel like, you know, 
you, you don't click with the 13th Doctor, that she doesn't feel like the Doctor to you, read this story. Because her actions here are very much in keeping with the Doctor and what the Doctor would do. And I love the flow of the story. I love the simplicity of the story and yet what it still does. And 13 is just written so well here. And it just goes to show that I really wish Moffat would have been given a, an, an episode during the 13th Doctor era to see what he could have done with her. It just goes to show that the 13th Doctor can be a very good Doctor when she has some good writing behind her. Uh, I really enjoy this story, and I highly recommend looking it up. You can actually just look it up online, find it for free, and read it. Again, it's just a short story. It's not overly long. Just type in Terror of the Umpity Ums, and it'll bring it right up, and you can read it, and it is a fantastic piece of Doctor Who. Uh, next on the list is The Sword of Orion, which is also another big Finnish story with uh, the Eighth Doctor. This is actually, I think, like the Eighth Doctor's second story. I think this is from very early in Big Finish days, right when he starts traveling with Charlie. Uh, so I'm assuming this came out in the 90s. Really good Cyberman story. Very good Cyberman story. Very good Cyberman story. One of the best Cyberman stories, I'd argue. Uh, it's like, it's you know, there's several things they can't do on the show because it's a family show. Children watch it. You, you you have to have safeguards in place. This kind of feels like Doctor Who with the safety bumpers taken off, which Big Finish, it's not the first time Big Finish has done this. Or maybe it was the first time Big Finish did that. It's not the only time Big Finish has done this. Where it, it has a little more adult feel with some of the cruel things the Cybermen do. Um, and it has a lot of fun to it. I like the Doctor and Charlie the captain of the ship they're investigating. She's a fascinating character. It takes some nice twists and turns with her. Some of the other characters uh, you either really like or really hate. There's this one character. He's kind of a slimy little devil. You don't like him, but the actor doing him plays him so well. And um, not everybody makes it through it. It's, it's a pretty cold story. I really was impressed with this one, very enamored with it. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. And last on the list, well, maybe, maybe we'll discuss a couple honorable mentions, uh, is the target novelization of The Massacre, which is drastically different from the story. I have reviewed The Massacre recently, recently the TV version, and I review the novelization. And the novelization just has so much more in it. Uh, I, the writer who wrote the novelization is also the person who penned the original draft of the story, which, of course, went through several edits, I believe. The head editor at the time, the script editor, really had to do a lot of chopping in there. Uh, because the original version was written before they knew Hartnell was going to be on holiday for episode two. Um, and, of course, a lot of cuts and edits, probably for timing and budget purposes. But so, But because the writer went back to one of his earlier drafts. It's just more fleshed out. You have a lot with the Doctor impersonating the Abbot, a lot of them barely missing each other. It just feels like a more fleshed out, cohesive story that focuses, whereas the TV version focuses more on Stephen, uh, the book version focuses on both. There's a lot of stuff with Stephen and a lot of stuff with the Doctor disguised as the Abbot. So you actually have both the characters in play in the novelization. If you like the Massacre, the TV version. I recommend reading the novelization because it really does feel more like it's the director's cut or it's the original vision before the studio execs you know, got a hold of it and chopped it all up and released their theatrical cut. Uh, and it's definitely my preferred version of the story, so I definitely recommend that pe people who are fans of the first Doctor checking that out. And then there's a couple others. Um, Real Time is really good. The animation for real time, uh, which came out uh, back in the early 2000s before the series revival. Of course, a sixth Doctor story where he's traveling traveling with Evelyn Smythe. It also deals with the Cybermen, does some really neat stuff with the Cybermen there, some fascinating things in it. Uh, the actor who played Lee in the TV movie is in it as well, playing a different character. That's quite a uh, fascinating read. The novelization, or fascinating listen, I should say, the novelization of The Myth Makers is also one I would recommend checking out. It is done, it's slightly different because it's done from the point of view of Homer, like he's reciting a tale. And it's actually a quite, 
quite nice read. I think I prefer it over the TV version of The Myth Makers as well, with The Myth Makers being completely missing. I think I do prefer the novelization just a slight bit. So I would recommend that. So those are just five of the many uh, expanded universe stories that I would recommend. Basically stuff that's not the TV show proper. I want to know what you think of these stories. If you've listened to them or if you're interested in any of them, comment down below. Let me know five stories you think every Doctor Who fan should check out from Expanded Media. List those as well. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button as well. That helps me out, and I certainly appreciate it. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me on that. There is a link to that down in the description. I want to give a shout-out to Colin Coney and Sam Vinning. I appreciate their support as I do the support of all of my patrons. It's very much appreciated, and my YouTube members. I have my P.O. box down there. If there's anything you'd like to send me to look at and review, a link to my Amazon wish list is down there, a link to my Amazon UK wish list. It's also down there as well. Check those out. Most importantly, thank you for watching.